Hi, I'm John from the Dart and Flutter team. In this session, we'll cover everything you need to know about building open source Dart and Flutter packages. Almost every Flutter app is built using open source Dart packages hosted on pub.dev, Dart's official package repository. When you publish a Dart package, it opens up new opportunities to collaborate with developers from all over the world. In this talk, we'll see how to use Dart's tools to keep your Dart packages squeaky clean and easy to maintain, to help you and other open source collaborators ship great code. We'll see how to get the most out of Pub, Dart's package manager, how to set up continuous integration, and finally, show how to publish. When developers work together, everyone gets a higher return on their investment. That's why the Dart and Flutter SDKs have been open source from the very beginning. Let's start by creating a package. I'm starting with a Flutter app that takes a list of tasks and schedules them on my calendar. Instead of publishing my entire app, I'd like to just publish the constraint-solving algorithm as a standalone package. To create a new Dart package, run the Dart create command. If your package depends on the Flutter SDK, use the Flutter create command instead. In this case, I'll create a Dart package so that developers can use it without the Flutter SDK, such as on a development machine or a server. A Dart package has a file structure like this. The lib directory is for code that other developers will use when importing your package. The test directory is for writing tests for your package. And the example directory should contain examples of how to use your package. The pubspec file contains important information about your package for pub.dev, including its version and dependencies. If you're using Dart 3 features such as patterns or records, set the minimum SDK version so that developers that depend on your package will only get this version when using the Dart 3 SDK. Once everything is configured, run Dart pub git to fetch the dependencies in your pub spec. To verify that your package is working, make sure to write some tests and run them using the Dart test command, or run the example. Now that we're up and running, we might need our package to depend on other packages so we don't have to write everything from scratch. Let's ship our package over to Jonas for some help. Hi, I'm Jonas. I work on package delivery, not this kind of packages, but as a software engineer on pub.dev delivering Dart and Flutter packages. And I'm going to talk about how you can manage package dependencies. Before we dive deep into dependencies, we need a quick note on package version numbers and how version numbers relate to each other. Dart uses semantic versioning, also known as SEMVR, where each version number is made up of a major, minor, and patch number separated by dots. And you normally start from version 100 as the first stable version. When publishing new versions of a package, you increase the major version when doing a breaking change in the API. For example, you might be removing a function or a class or completely changing the behavior of a function or a class. If you're only adding new functionality, you do a minor version increase. For example, you might be adding a class or a function. And if you're only fixing bugs and not changing the API, you can settle on increasing the patch version. Using major, minor patch numbers allows users of a package to quickly assess the size and the scope of the changes in a new version. Obviously, we cannot encode everything in the version number, so it's customary to write a change log file that describes what changed in each version. Back to dependencies. Packages can depend on other packages. When adding dependency on a package, we usually write a constraint on the version number of the package in the pubspec YAML. We can do this using the Dart pub add command, which takes a package name as an argument. For example, to add the path package, we can run this command. This automatically finds the latest compatible version of path, adds path to your pubspec YAML, and writes a constraint on the version number of the path package. It usually writes a caret constraint. The caret constraint is a shorthand for at least this version and less than the next major version, which is a quick way of saying this package needs version 183 or newer, but don't give us a new major version. Since breaking changes require a new major version, it should be safe to use any newer version up to the next major version. When we fetch dependencies, we'll have a pubspec.log file, which locks dependencies to a specific version. If you're writing an application, it's important to check the log file into source control because the log file ensures that the version of your dependency that you're using in testing is also the version used in production. And while I said it should be safe to use a newer version up to the next major version, that's not always the case because newer versions of a package may have new or different bugs. 
So an app developer should always test their app using the exact version of the packages that they plan to use when releasing the app. However, if you're creating a package to be published on pub.dev, it's often best to not check in the log file because you will want to be testing with the latest version of your dependencies as this is probably what most of your users are going to get. We can also add dev dependencies. Dev dependencies can only be used for testing and development. When someone takes dependency in your package, they won't be installing your dev dependency. For example, we've added checks and petite parser as dev dependencies to the constraint solver package. If we look at the dependency graph of the scheduler app that depends on constraint solver, the dependency graph won't include the dev dependencies of constraint solver. But if we're working on constraint solver where it is the root project and we're solving its dependencies, we'll get a dependency graph that includes the dev dependencies. Using dev dependencies allows us to have dependencies that are used for testing and development, but are not required by people using our package. This is important because Dart only allows one version of each package. So if two packages need different versions of the same package, like checks, then they can't be used together, unless their dependency on checks is a dev dependency. Now that we have some dependencies, we can run Dart pub outdated and get a report of what can be upgraded. Here we see that the checks package is upgradable to a newer version. If we run Dart pub upgrade, we upgrade package checks to a newer version. This makes sense because 0 to 1 is compatible with the constraint we have in the pubspec YAML. We don't get a newer version of the petite parser because the constraint in pubspec YAML doesn't allow a newer major version. The Dart pub upgrade command actually just ignores the log file and tries to get a newer version. You can get the same result by deleting the log file and running Dart pub get. If we go back to the outdated report, we also see that Petit Parser was not upgradable, but a newer version of Petit Parser is resolvable. This means that it's possible to get a newer version of Petit Parser if we upgrade the constraints in our pubspec YAML. Notice that sometimes it's not possible to get the latest version of a dependency. This is because we only allow one version of each package in our dependency resolution. This keeps the dependency tree lean, but can also cause version conflicts. To upgrade a dependency that is held back by constraints in pubspec YAML, we can use dart pub upgrade dash dash major versions. This will upgrade dependencies while ignoring the upper bound constraints and then make necessary changes to pubspec YAML. So if we run this, we'll get a newer version of petite parser. But we also see that this actually modifies the constraints in our pubspec YAML because we've upgraded to a newer major version of petite parser. As previously mentioned, a new major version may have breaking changes. So it's a good idea to read the change log of Petit Parser when upgrading to a new major version. It's often also necessary to update our code, but not always. The breaking change may not be affecting the parts of the API you're using. To sum up, when managing dependencies, semantic versioning helps you quickly assess the scope of a change, whether it's breaking or not. Using version constraints, you can easily upgrade to new compatible versions with Dart Pub Upgrade. But you should always test your code because newer versions might have new bugs. For this, let's go back to John. Now let's look at how you can set up continuous integration for your package. When you're working on open source code, running tests for each change makes it easier to accept contributions with confidence. To make testing easy, the Dart team maintains the setup Dart workflow for GitHub Actions, which can be enabled from your repository's Actions tab. The workflow sets up a Dart SDK for you to use for your build steps. The Dart SDK provides tools to fetch package dependencies, check your code's formatting, run static analysis, and run unit tests. You can even configure the Dart analyzer to enforce specific lint rules in your analysis options.yaml file. You can find a list of lint rules in the description. The Dart team has also published a new package for making assertions in unit tests called checks. It preserves the static type information of the object you're testing so that you can get auto-completion. You can also collect code coverage to track the percentage of your code that's covered by tests and report this information to apps like Coveralls. This can help you identify when a new feature might need more tests. Now that our tests are running, let's go back to Jonas to see if we're ready to publish. We're almost ready to publish, but there's a few things we should check first. If you don't have a license file, the publish command will ask you to create one. Dart uses the BSD free license because it allows others 
to use, modify, and distribute the code with few limitations. You can choose another license if you want to. You can even write your own, but it's a lot easier for others to use your package if it's published under an existing open source license. Publishing is forever. Once a package version is published, it can generally not be unpublished or changed. You can publish newer versions of the same package, but a published version can generally not be removed. That's because deleting a package affects all the users that depend on the package. And we don't want app developers to be unable to update or release their apps because some package that they depend on has been unpublished. There are, of course, exceptions for policy violations, etc. Read pub.dev slash policy for more information. While published package versions cannot be deleted, it is possible to retract a published package version. Retraction is not the same as deletion. A retracted package version still exists. In fact, users can continue to get the retracted package version if they have the retracted package version in their log file, meaning they've already started to using it before it was retracted, then they can continue to do so. But the version solver will not allow retracted version when the user is adding a dependency to their pubspec YAML. Technically, a retracted version can also be forced by pinning it the version in dependency overrides. But in simple terms, you can say that retracting a package version stops new users from adopting the version that was retracted. This can be useful if shortly after publishing a new version, you discover that it was broken in some way. If we stop maintaining our package, we can mark it as discontinued. This won't prevent anyone from using it, but it'll hide it from default search results on pub.dev and users will be warned when they're using it. Now that we know that publishing is forever and hard to undo, we might want to run a few checks before we publish. We can do this by running dart pub publish dash dash dry run. In this case, it highlights that the change log does not even mention the version number we're trying to publish. That's a strong indication that we might have forgotten to write a change log entry. Once we've resolved these warnings, we can publish by running dart pub publish without the dash dash dry run. But before we hit Y to confirm publishing, it's always a good idea to review the list of files just to check that you're not accidentally including files you don't want to share. Now let's check with John to see how this looks once published. Let's look at our package homepage. This is the homepage for a Dart package. The readme is the first thing you see, so it's a good idea to include a short description at the top, followed by usage examples, and additional details that might be helpful for users that are getting started. The tabs at the top provide quick access to the change log, examples, and more. The description for your package will be displayed in the sidebar, as well as the repository link. You can also add topics to your package. This is a new pub feature that makes it easy to find other packages with the same topic. This helps developers find similar packages and discover your package. Pub.dev also displays the license in the sidebar, and if it's a known license, labels it using the SPDX identifier. Pub also generates API documentation and creates a link in the sidebar. When you add documentation comments to your package, they'll be converted into an easy-to-read web page hosted automatically using Dart's Dart doc command. You can use markdown syntax, including code blocks. If you're an individual, small team, or a large organization, you can publish multiple packages using a publisher, which lets you create a group of package maintainers and also helps your developers find all of your published packages. Your package will get an overall score based on popularity, health, and maintenance after publishing. Check the Scores tab to see if there are any issues that need to be fixed. The final result is a healthy, well-tested, stable package that's ready for other developers to use. We hope these tools help you ship great open source Dart and Flutter packages using Pub. We can't wait to see what you build. Thanks for watching.